Okay, g'day folks, welcome back. So yesterday we had a bit of a discussion on the three common types of slinging methods we use. We used a basket hitch, a direct load, and a choke hitch. All right, and we had a little bit of a talk about what effects they have on the slings and their capacities. Now, I want to delve into that aspect of it a little bit more today, all right? So what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at some sling load charts and look at the different um, parts of the sling chart and what each part means, all right? Just so you have a good thorough understanding of what the sling load charts are and how are you going to use them. All right, so what we'll do is we'll delve straight into it. We'll start off with the um, softies. All right, so we'll bring up the um, chart for the soft slings. All right, here we go. All right, so this is just your typical chart. Now, these charts, they're pretty common. You can get them in a lot of different places. Um, you get those little um, pocket cards you can keep on you. you. A lot of people will have them on their phone on different apps. All right, but it's a good idea to know what the different symbols mean on it and how do you actually read the chart. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at it and see what that exactly means. All right, so we've got our typical chart here for a softie. All right, so you've got your different configurations across the top, and we'll go in a little bit more into each of those. Down here, you've got the capacity of each sling and what the typical color is for those slings, all right? Now, most of your soft slings are color-coded, although you can't rely on the color coding. You always go back to the um, tag just to make sure. So, for example, if you're working in a... Um, in the theatre side of things, you'll find all your softies are black. So it's always good to actually look at the tag just to double check what it's good for. All right. So you start at the top here. You've got your different configurations. So you've got a direct load. So that's straight onto the hook and straight onto a shackle or an eye bolt, etc. So in this direct load, the um, capacity is going to be equivalent to what the working load limit is on the sling itself. So a one tonne, you can lift up one tonne, two tonne, eight, you can lift up two tonne, etc., etc. Now, the next one we've got here, that's just for a single sling on a straight lift with a choke. All right. So as I said yesterday, typically with a um, choke, you're going to reduce it um, by 20%, which leaves you with 80% of the capacity. So, for example, on a one-ton sling, you can now lift 800 kilos. Keep in mind that's just a single sling on a choke. All right, and uh, two-ton at 1.6, etc., etc. Work your way down. So you basically just find what you're looking for. So if your configuration is a single sling with a choke, and it's a three-ton sling, you just cross them over and you find out what you're good for. So in that instance, you're good for 2.4 ton. The next one here is we've got a basket. Now, with this basket, that is with the sling legs going straight up in a vertical position. So that might be if you've got it on a ram's hook and it's going straight up with no angle involved. Or it could be if you're using a basket on a dual lift and it's going straight up to separate crane hooks as well. All right, so a basket hitch will typically just double what the sling's good for. So for example, a uh, one ton sling, you can now lift two ton. All right, now, these next few we've got here, we're talking about basket hitches, but where you've got an angle involved. So if it's basket around load and it's going up to a single point on the hook, you may have an angle involved there. So it's gonna be a 30, 60, 90, 120 degree angle, whatever the case may be. All right, so, if you have a 30 degree angle, all right? So it's not very much of an angle at all, all right? You're going to be good for 1.9 ton, all right? So if it was straight up, you'd be good for two ton, 30 degree angle, 1.9. So you can see there's a little bit of a deterioration on the angle. Now, as you come across to 60, 90 or 120, whatever the angle is, all right? Remember, it's going to reduce it. The bigger the angle, the less you can lift. All right, so if you go all the way to 120, all right, you're back to one ton using that um, basket hitch. So keep in mind, it's always a good idea to keep have a look at what the angle is when you're doing a basket hitch. Don't just assume it's a basket, you're going to double it. If you've got the angle there, you need to take that into account as well. Okay, now, as we go across, we've got two more left here. All right now, these are both 60 degree angles. Now, 60 degrees, 
and that is with a direct lift now not necessarily attached with a ring all right it could be two independent swings on a hook as well now with the one tonner all right at 60 degrees you're good for 1.7 ton now 60 degrees and choked all right so if you've got it choked and then at 60 degrees you're good for 1.4 ton okay so that's your basic chart there so and it tells you the different configurations and which one you're going to use so you look at the rigging setup you've got you go back to your chart and you have a look and see what you're actually good for all right so that's your basic soft sling um sling chart all right now if we'll we'll roll on down and we will go to our chains all right <clears throat> Now this is a typical chain one so same again you've got your chain size down here and your different configurations up the top here all right now a straight sling single leg straightly straight attached you go to the side so if you've got 10 mil chain you'll be good for 3.2 ton okay now this next one here the adjustable sling now you see it's got a little asterisk there next to it now the reason that asterisk is there <coughs> is whether or not you're going to derate it depending on the type of shortener you're using now we'll have a quick roll down here and we'll look at the different shorteners all right so oh, can't quite get that down far enough all right let's bring these up a bit all right so there's three typical types of shorteners you're going to use all right now this one in the middle here that's your um, grab hook shortener but you'll notice there's no wings on it right this one here with the grab hook it's got those little wings at the base of it which spread the load across the link now if there's no wings on it it's typically going to need to be derated all right with the wings on it it won't all right so with this asterisk here that's assuming it's got wings on it which means it doesn't need to be derated all right now you can also get these clevis type hooks or grab hooks all right now these ones um, there's no deration on these either but be very careful how you use them all right make sure you do put the bottom of the link sitting in the bottom of the hook all right I have seen a few mistakes made on these ones all right now if you are going to make a deration all right it's typically going to be on the um, chain tag itself if it's not that deration is usually a 25 cent deration so it's a similar deration to as if it was choked around the load as well all right so that's the reasoning behind that asterisk there because if you're not using one of these types of um, shorteners and you are using one without the wings you are going to need a deration on it as well all right but if you're using one with the wings or the um, clevis type um, then there's no duration involved okay now we've got a single leg reeved sling so we'll stick with our 10 mil chains so if it's a single leg and reeved now you'll see that little d shape how it's not square it's not round that means it's going to be the same on both a square load and a round load all right so that's the reasoning behind that little diagram there all right it's not if you're picking up something that's shaped like a D. All right, so square or round, you're going to be good for 2.4 ton on a single leg. Now we've got our straight sling with the different angles. So we've got 60 degrees, 90 degrees, 120 degrees. All right, so 10 mil, 60 degrees, five and a half ton, 90 degrees, four and a half, and 120 is 3.2. All right, now, a common question how do you know what the angle is all right so you're not going to sit there with a protractor and check it out all right a good rule of thumb is if the legs of the chain are the same um, length as the distance at the base so you've essentially got an equilateral triangle that's going to give you 60 degrees all right if it's the chains are longer than what the base are then it's going to be less than 60 and you're fine all right if the chains aren't quite as long as the um, distance between the attachment points 
then you're going to go at least up to 90. Now, how are you going to tell if it's 90? Look, most people are going to have one of these in their hands. All right, you can hold that up. You can use that as a guide against the chains because that's going to be a 90 degree angle there. All right. So if it's less than that, you can use the 90 degree. If it's more than that, go to the 120. All right. So just your, any square thing you've got in your pocket, you can sort of hold it up and check it on those chains. And it's a good rough guide as to what your angle is going to be. All right, and 120, which is the maximum you're allowed to use on a direct attachment. All right, so keep in mind, the bigger the angle, the less you can lift. All right. Now, when we're talking about reeved slings, now, if it's, um, if it's um, choked and it's 60 degrees, now 60 degrees is the maximum angle you can have with a choked sling, so that's why it won't have 90 or 120. So here we've got 60 degrees and choked or reeved. All right, so you've got your different um, figures there. Now you've got a basket. So square or round again, doesn't matter. That's a basket. On, gives you your different um, configurations there. And then here you have a two leg basket where once again, it's always going to be a 60 degrees. All right, so that's just a quick rundown on the different charts and how you're going to read them. All right, so always refer to the tags on the chains or the slings. Um, but as a rough guide, pull up these charts. But remember, um, some manufacturers may be slightly different, so always good to go back to the actual ones you have on the slings themselves. All right, and remember, if they don't have a tag on them, you need to tag them out because you can't use them. All right, so hope that um, explains it a bit better for you. All right, if you do have any questions, don't forget to um, leave a note in the comments and don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button as well. All right, thanks for your time and I'll talk to you soon.